We work for the people as we bring you the His truth, His love, His compassion, and His freedom. Spelled L O V E is going to set us yes all for free from the abundance of all truth. Today, brethren, we're going to be speaking to the families of peace. We're going to be jumping into Matthew here, Matthew chapter ten, and for our foundation scriptures. And as we bring into the forgiveness and our prayers, let's just grab a clean sheet of notebook paper. We're going to be tap dancing once again through the scriptures. And let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, the endless term of your love of this evening, of this morning, and not any part of our world, that you bring the solutions of all peace by having us lift up our repentance and our prayers, that we cry unto you that we want to know it ever so more every day, that we lift up, that we want to, that, that we cry unto you to pour down mercies and discernment upon us. And dear Lord, we thank you for the pouring the new mercy upon us every day. The living word of God is a healing, the healing brings us to that new light, the new life, the new love of the Lord, brings us to the compassion of, of your infinite truth, the truth just set us all free. Thank you, Jesus, for this evening. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. A morning of change, a moment of truth. Come into us, O Lord. We shall be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, Jesus loves you. He wants you. He He's bringing this so much of a change to you. As you speak of our topic today, the families of peace. Let's get it right into our foundation scripture. Matthew chapter 10, 34 through 37. Do not think that I come to bring peace on earth. I do not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come up to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves sons or daughters more than me is not worthy of me. Brothers and sisters, Jesus warns of the cost of discipleship. In Luke 12, verse 49, I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Brethren, we need to understand now, as Psalms 41 verse 9 expresses, was even my fa familiar friend of whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. I've had many a friend lift up their heel against me, but I moved on with my life. I, they want, when they want to stay in their own ways of sin, I move on without them. They can call me insane, crazy for the assignment that I have been sent with, provided from the mountaintop, and it doesn't I cannot go fall, fall backwards to their delight, to their understanding. I have God's understanding. I have God's calling. And it cannot, God's calling cannot be articulated or explained like reading a grocery list, a laundry list of dry cleaning. We have seen that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, offers peace with God, peace with mankind, peace with oneself. One has to pass our understanding and guards our heart. What about peace with families? Did not Jesus say his own disciples would be persecuted for their own families? It is true, they're following. Jesus sometimes causes family turmoil when unbelieving family members cannot accept one's conversion to Christ. While resistant to such faith results to an expulsion and disinheritance or worse. Even so, when families are willing to submit themselves in the will of God, Jesus and his apostles show the way to true peace with families. But first, always consider prayer first. Always consider. So we have the need for the peace by starting with our families. Many families, such as the one that I came from, are very dysfunctional, where conflict, misbehavior, and even abuse on a part of individual members of the family occur continually leading other members to accommodate uh, such actions. Our children grow up understanding such conduct to be normal. Dysfunctional behavior is often passed on from generation to generation. But family dysfunction destroys peace, a, a sense of illiterate power in, in the home place above children, above spouses, above, above anything. Between husband and wives leading to fights and divorce, between parents and children leading, leading to mental and physical abuse, between siblings leading to lifelong alienation. 
Dysfunctional behavior often creates a volatile home environment. But Jesus offers his peace for families. By his teaching on marriage, Jesus taught that marriage is to be for life. It was God's plan for the family from the beginning. So much family turmoil is caused when spouses divorce. Malachi chapter 2 verse 16. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. But Jesus gave only one reason to dissolve a marriage. The reason is fornication, obeying Jesus' previous quick and easy and easy divorces. And Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. From Matthew chapter 6 verse 9, So then, they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what, what God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce to put the, her away? He said to her, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces, wife except for sexual immorality, and marries another commits adultery. Whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. Luke chapter 16, verse 18. Whoever divorces, wife and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. We sing unto the Lord a peace. We sing unto the Lord a new song. We sing unto the Lord the change that God wants us all to have. By his apostles are the teaching of the family. Husbands are to, to love and respect their wives. They are to love their wives. They are not to be bitter toward their wives. They are to understand and honor their wives. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Husbands likewise dwell with them that, with understanding, giving honor to his wife as to weaker vessel, as being as together of the grace of life, that your prayers may be, may not be hindered. Wives are to love and submit to the husbands. Older women are to teach the younger women to love their husbands. Titus chapter 3 and 4. Likewise, the, old, the other woman, likewise, they be reverent behavior. Not slanderers, not given to much wine, teach, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children. Their children are to obey and honor their parents. They are to obey their parents in the Lord. They are to honor their father and mother. This is well pleasing to the Lord who also submitted to his parents. Luke chapter 2 verse 51. And then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. The peace Jesus offers to families. By their fruits you shall know them. By their fruits you shall know them. Many oppose what the Bible teaches concerning marriage, divorce. They rebel against such concepts as wives submitting to husbands. But consider the lives and families of those who protest so loudly. As Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. Matthew chapter 15 verse, Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 through 20. For wisdom, wisdom is justified by their children, by her children, wisdoms, the beautiful woman called wisdom. Compare marriages and families of those who submit to biblical principles. Where wives and grandparents were married, where, wi where wives' parents are married 53 years by, parent, by some parents, 57 years. My wife's brothers. 43 years, my three brothers that I, kind of spiritual brothers, 41, 34, 26, and 33 years. Long life marriages, loving families, can be the norm for the generations. You know, the exception where the teachings of Christ are followed. As Jesus said, wisdom is justified by her children. Matthew 11, verse 19. Then the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, a glutton and a wine bibber, 
a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. We come into this moment of the world that we live in. We again, I say, we, we pick up the something that used to be called the newspaper that we were wowed by the headlines. But now we have the news in a heartbeat, in a second, from the Twitters to the Facebooks to Yahoo News to Google News, online news, ABC TV is now ABC Online. With all kinds of people coming into this time, we come into this expression of God's loving truth. We come into this time right now to bring in to the inheritance that God is bringing us to the now, to the way, to the truth, to the expression of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, the expression of the knowledge of God, bringing us to His love, bringing us to His peace, and the peace does set us all free, brethren. The peace does give us the time, the endless rhyme that comes into each and every all accords of this moment. God bring us to this mountain top. God bring us to the valleys of your love. God bring us to all and all the now of your faith. We have to understand if we are to bring, bring peace outside of our doorways our park benches, our shelters, wherever we are, are living, it starts with our families, it starts with ourselves. It starts by defeating anger. It starts by expressing what the nine fruits are all about as we are teaching and learning from Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. We'll do part group 3 tomorrow for Sunday's message at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We cannot be coming to you at a, at a better time of today's world. We cannot be coming to you addressing the love of the truth. The truth just set us all free. With this time, brothers and sisters, with this time, comes the absolute way of change in the world. Blessed are the change makers, they should be called the children of God. We see this, brothers and sisters. We see this in all that we do. Family members may become enemies over the faith. Matthew chapter 10 verse 21. Now brothers, will deliver up brother to death and his father, a father, his child, or children to rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Like that has not happened to me. There can be peace of mind in knowing one's true family. Matthew chapter 12 verse 48 and 49. But he answered and said to the one who had told him, who is my mother and who, and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. There can be peace of mind in knowing one's true family. The best hope for the peace with the family comes from, from above. Don't listen to these family experts who have been divorced three or four times who can live life, who live lives their own life says scattered, their family scattered abroad. Listen to the God of peace who ordained the institutions of marriage and family. You can listen to God through your prayers. Answer prayer starts where brothers and sisters starts in heaven. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. So together with his apostles provide clear teaching concerning marriage and family. Will lead you and your families into the paths of peace. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Luke chapter 1, verse 79. Into the way of peace. Brothers and sisters, we sing a new song of the Lord. We sing by making peace with oneself. by bringing all anxiousness out of our lives to now and to listen, lift up and express ourselves what John chapter 14 verse 27 says to us peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the word gives do I give to you but let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid we sing this brothers and sisters of the new song of the new faith of the new love we do this by saying, by 
expressing ourselves through the scriptures. And this right now is Romans 10.13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, understanding for those who watch us every day and every broadcast, any minister must give an altar call. Every minister. This is for your chance to bring some, if you are a Christian, to bring someone who is not a Christian and to let them share in the redemption of God like you are. To bring into the aspects of God's truth and to give you that inheritance you rightly deserve. God created you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that is you, whosoever. For those that don't know Christ, those to be recommitted with, the Christ, with Christ, repeat this after me, please. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and myself and turn to you, O God, and to accept you as my personal Savior and Lord. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to take me and take control and to make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. Thank you, Father, for loving me. That's my wife praising your name in the background. I am lifting your name up. But most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God before the throne of God. It's time, brothers and sisters, to get into the flow. It's time, brothers and sisters, to get into the heartbeat of each and every one, and each and every kind. Jesus has reconciled the disciples back, the new disciple back to the God of peace. It is the peace of God that brings us to the families of, the, of being one mind and one judgment of Christ. Uh, brings us to the understanding of what we said in our foundation scripture, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Do not think that I come to bring peace on earth. I do not come to bring peace but a sword. We are fighting the fight of good faith. Jesus wants to put who do you love first? The division is God or families or God or sin. God appointed you, anointed you. God has sent you forward to the matchless, to the whispers of the wind, to the four corners of the world, to guide you and place you with peace. God is going to bring you that peace of the unity of the Holy Spirit, one mind and one judgment of Christ. So I give unto you that change, that love, to give on to you the purpose to drive ever deeper into your life, to drive ever so deeper into the accordance of truth, and the truth shall set you free. By bringing you into all aspects of his love. John chapter 13, verse 18. I do not speak concerning of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be, may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. And that is what shall happen to you as it happened to me. I share that again because we shall be persecuted, denied, betrayed. Those of us who want to stay in the comfort zone of sin, that eventually the sin does eat you up like a bacteria. It gives you that comfort zone of being comforted, then it swallows you up and eats you up. We come, brothers and sisters, and bringing us all into the unity of change into the unity of what God wants us all to have, to be of one mind and one judgment of Christ, to share in the glory of God's peace, to share in the glory of the everlasting love, one mind and one judgment of Christ. We don't have peace in the world because we have such dysfunctional families attempting to raise their children when they themselves, the parents, have not even been raised up properly. We come into a country such as North, the United States that we no longer seem to care. We don't. We have, we have presidents just living the lifestyle and giving sound bites. As, wow, look what the president said. Ooh. But they endorse pathetic homosexual lifestyle and think that this is the norm. It's not the norm. 
when they, their own personal lives are not the norm. But come into the aspect of this truth. There's only one truth, God. There is no mandatory Sunday services when we're worshiping such ilks that I just mentioned, the Antichrist. We come into this time from right now, speaking of the unity of the Holy Spirit, one mind and one judgment of Christ, in Jesus' name. We have right now wisdom available for us. You have a treasure chest unlocked with the riches of God's rubies in front of you. All you have to do is turn your life over to the Lord and wisdom is going to pour down upon you, the wisdom and discernment. More than you deserve, more than I deserve. But we must get into the living word of God. We must get into the foundation of the truths I often say of, get, of receiving those who wish to help us by receiving those that God has sent to us to ordain us, by receiving those people into our lives that are God sent. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us forward. Thank you, Jesus, for the absolute truth. Thank you, Jesus, for giving you the guidance of the aspirations of this time. And brethren, we gave the altar call. We have given this message now. We are inviting you to become a financial partner into our ministry. We are inviting you to come into this life of God's love by traveling with us in, in our crusades that we have planned, Africa, India, Asia, Europe. By coming into this fruitfulness of the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ, by guiding us and placing us into this time, right now, into this time. As you, and Jesus said, you don't have to wait four months for the harvest. The harvest is now. The fields are white for the harvest. The harvest is now. So as you plant your seed into this ministry, your financial seed, you shall reap what you sow. You shall reap what you sow. And the windows, windows of heaven will sing out to the, unto you, will open up above you, and they'll pour down blessing upon blessing that you have no room to place them in any of your storehouses. Brethren, this is your time, you're now, the faith of the new you. The expressions of God's love, the truth, shall bring us all free. The truthfulness of God's love, His purpose, the purpose of the elegance, of the aspirations of God's truth, His truth to set us all free. His truth is the now of faith. Brethren, Take this opportunity, flow with it, and grow with it. For in Jesus' name, we love you. Let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this time. Let's go forth and to the world and go and pro proclaim the living word of God. We thank you for this time that the road of grace which brings us to your straight and narrow, which leads us to spreading out this, this message, this, your love, ever some more. We lift up our repentance and pray you as you pour down the new mercies of this new day in the AM hours throughout the world. and the PM hours, we ask you to bless us for an evening of fellowship with our families to be at peace with each other. To be at peace of one mind and one judgment of Christ. And we say we want to know you ever more every day better than we knew you yesterday and in the blessed with your wisdom and discernment. Peace. You have given us the giftings of, from Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Peace we give unto you to the world. For in the masterless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, that does conclude our broadcast for this evening. On behalf of Anita Hewitt and myself, Brian Hewitt, the man, we thank you for your time. Until next time. We walk by faith and not by sight. Just do stay up to date with all of our news and information of our exciting crusades coming to your part of the world at BrianHewitt.com. BrianHewitt.com. Au revoir. Adios. Good day for the people. And we'll see you on church on Sunday.